is oxygen sensor readings and fuel trim not your strong suit? Stick around, let me show you how the top 1% of automotive technicians read and understand fuel trim and oxygen sensor readings. Let's take a look. If you're having trouble understanding the differences between the oxygen sensor reading and fuel trim, you're in the right place. You're not the only one. When I started in this industry, I had a hell of a time understanding that same information, and I'm gonna show you guys how to be able to process it a little bit better, so this way, when it comes time for you to do a fuel trim diag, it's gonna be a lot easier for you simply by using the data that your scan tool is actually giving you. If you're returning to the channel, I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to check out these videos, and I hope we're helping you guys as our mission is to better the automotive industry one technician at a time. If you're new to the channel, Thank you guys for the support. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, so this way you can see anytime we drop a new video. Also, for both of you guys, returns and newbies, make sure that you guys put in the comments what other subjects or testing or ideas you would like to see, so this way it helps me help you guys. So if you guys are ready, let's take a look. As always, I always say that tools do not buy skill. Today I'm gonna to be using my Top Scan Top Don dongle for me to be able to analyze the data on this particular vehicle. Now you can have a $15,000 tool, but if you don't know how to use it or you only use it like a code reader, then it defeats the purpose. So we're gonna use this today to go ahead and look at the data. If you're trying to buy your own top scan, check out my link in the bio where you can get a top scan of your own with a good discount code that's attached to it. I'm always here to help. So let's go ahead and plug this into the DLC and let's get going. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I'm a big proponent in using Global OBD2 when it comes to drivability diagnostics. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to EOBD. And if you don't know your protocols yet, you can do the auto scan, but this one's CAN. So we're going to go ahead and do or select CAN protocol. Right now, my phone is communicating to my dongle where we're going to be getting all the vehicle information that we need. We'll hit OK, and we're going to go to live data. So just to give you guys a heads up, I already went ahead and did a lean condition on the vehicle. So I... I disconnected a vacuum hose and that we're going to be able to see this on our live data. If you're a technician who whatever data pids your scan tool gives you, that's what you run with. You need to change that habit. Uh, we want to go ahead and look at only what's pertinent to my diagnosis, which would be my fuel trim status, my, excuse me, my fuel system status, short-term, long-term fuel trim, my aftercat O2, my Lambda, and then my uh, Bank 1, Sensor 1, O2. And that should be all. So we're going to go ahead and start the car up. It does run like crap, and that's because of the large vacuum leak that I've created. But let's go ahead and start it up so this way we can see the whole system uh, adapt to the changes. So let's start it up. As of right now, in our closed loop status, my short-term fuel trim is plus 20%. Long-term is plus 3 uh, my Lambda is 1.2, so it's excessively lean, and my oxygen sensor is at 4.3, which means it's lean also. Should be around 3.3. So let's watch it just a little bit. We're waiting for the engine computer to adapt uh, to the lean condition. When, we, when that happens, we're going to see our long-term fuel trim shoot up, and then our short-term fuel trim is going to drop off. So let's monitor this for a little bit. So right there, notice how my long-term fuel trim has now jumped up to about 13%. My short-term fuel trim is at plus 20. So the PCM is already making some adaptations. Now look at my long-term. Long-term has just jumped up to 21%. And my short-term is around 20%. Right? Now the long-term fuel trim has adapted for the lean condition, so now it knows it's there and it's actually compensating for it. So the old school trick is to raise the RPM and short-term fuel trim should, get, should drop closer to zero. So let's give that a shot. So notice I'm bringing my RPM So I'm, I'm about 2,800 RPM and my short-term fuel trim is at plus four and long-term is at plus 29. So again, we're able to see that when we raise the RPM, if it's a vacuum leak, your short-term fuel trim is gonna get closer to zero. Okay, so that test rules one portion already out. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk over the complications between understanding fuel trim and what the O2 sensors are doing. So one of the common concerns that I see technicians have is they'll see that fuel trim is plus 19 
but they're looking at the O2 sensor and the O2 sensor is still reading lean. So then that begins to cause some confusion. Like, wait, 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 wait. If we're adding fuel, how are we still lean, right? So let's go ahead and analyze that real quick. Right here, we can see that my short-term fuel trim is at plus 19 and my long-term is at plus 32. And if I look at my Lambda, I'm at 1.2 Lambda. So I'm excessively lean. And if I look at my oxygen sensor or my air fuel ratio on this vehicle, it's at 4.2 volts, which should be at 3.3 if we were at stoichiometric. So this, again, indicates that we're excessively lean. Now, what causes some confusion is the short term is adding fuel. So how are we still lean? Remember, the oxygen sensor is reporting what it's seeing in the exhaust compared to outside of the exhaust stream itself. The engine computer is going to take that information and make fuel trim adjustments to try to alleviate the reading inside of the exhaust. Because we have a vacuum leak, the engine computer is trying to adapt based off of what it's reading from the mass airflow. But because the mass airflow is reading X amount of incoming air compared to what it's actually seeing in the exhaust, the computer can't really do much anymore. Plus, my long-term fuel trim is already at plus 32, so it's already maxed out. So the engine computer has tried to repair this, but it was unsuccessful. So what is it going to do? It's going to set a check engine light for a fuel trim control. Now, I'm going to raise the RPM so this way we can see how that changes. So right here, I'm about 12, uh, excuse me, 2,500 RPM. My short-term fuel trim has dropped to about 6%. My long-term is still at about 32, which is normal because it's adapted. So my short-term has changed. If I look at my Lambda reading, my Lambda is now saying that we're slightly rich and my oxygen sensor or my air fuel ratio sensor is also confirming that with a 3.2 voltage reading. So what we can see here is that now with the vehicle, our Lambda just went to one, so it's at perfect stoichiometric. Because the vehicle is at higher RPM, it's able to mask that issue that we're having with the vacuum leak and this is why the fuel trims changed and also why my lambda reading and my oxygen sensor voltages also changed. They've adapted to the conditions that were present at that time. I hope this was helpful because for me, when I understood this, it helped me a lot more when it came time to evaluate live data. So always remember that the air fuel ratio or the oxygen sensor is going to be reading what's in the exhaust. The fuel trim is going to be the adaptation or the adjustment for whatever those air fuel ratios are actually reading. As you guys could see that whenever the vehicle goes into higher RPM, the engine computer can mask or excuse me. The vacuum leak gets masked because of everything happening at such a faster rate that we're able to get a better fuel control. That's why our short term fuel trim gets com or comes closer to actual zero. So always remember that when you're looking at fuel trim, if you see a positive reading, the oxygen sensor might still be reading lean, right? It's reporting what it's actually seeing. And the fuel trim is trying to adjust for whatever the O2 or the air fuel ratio is reading. If you get a rich condition, the oxygen sensor might still be rich, but the air fuel, the long-term fuel trim is going to be taking fuel away to try to alleviate that rich condition. So as always, guys, I hope this information was super helpful. Again, if you guys like the information, make sure you guys give us a like, a follow, and turn on that notification bell so you get a ding every time we drop a new video. And if you're trying to buy your own top scan, make sure you use the link in my bio so this way you can purchase your own at a discounted rate. And I'll be posting more videos on how I use my top scan on a day-to-day -day basis. This is Oscar Gomez from Master Automotive Training, here to bear to the automotive industry one technician at a time. This starts with you, and I'll see you guys on the next one.